When Apple announced the new iPhone 14 Pro, they talked about the A16 Bionic chip very, very briefly, which is confusing because it's on a new four nanometer manufacturing process. So today I wanna to find out why Apple was so quiet about this new four nanometer A16 Bionic. How different is it actually? What does it mean for the next generation of Apple Silicon? And how does it compare to the current M2 chip? Today, that's exactly what we're going to find out. So leave a like down below, get subscribed to the channel, and let's get started. Today's video is sponsored by Taurus. Just like you want the best performance out of your iPhone, you probably want the best performance out of its protection. That's why Taurus has great cases like the Guardian case with military grade shock protection, camera cutout with lens protection, and anti-slip texturing. Guardian comes in MagSafe and non-MagSafe versions and has a translucent back so that you can let the color of your iPhone shine through. You can even get the Mars Climber version with a convenient kickstand for propping up your phone. Or choose a hard shell clear case with minimal design and anti-yellowing features to show off your iPhone's color while not adding bulk to your phone, thanks to its slim design. For the slimmest possible fit, pick the Origin Fit Slim Profile Case with velvet textured surfaces, extremely thin and lightweight build, and camera protection built in. These cases are all specifically designed to fit perfectly on the iPhone 14 lineup, so if you wanna check them out, head over to the link in the description below. And now let's get back to the video. So for those who don't know, let's start this video with a quick recap of the A16 Bionic chip. So the Apple Bionic architecture consists of two performance cores paired with four efficiency cores. This year, to go with the new manufacturing process, Apple also has some new code names, Everest and Sawtooth. Now in the actual Apple event, there weren't that many details on this new chip. In fact, Apple basically compared it to the A13 from 2019, which is weird. So we don't really have that much of an understanding from Apple itself about what's actually different in these chips. So to figure that out, well, we're gonna have to run some benchmarks. It's basically unavoidable. And we'll start with Geekbench because that's what pretty much everybody uses. If we look at the iPhone 13 Pro Max, we see a single core score of 1728, a multi-core score of 4790, and a compute score of 13427 but the new iPhone 14 Pro tests higher in all three categories, 1874, 5424, and 15388. Now curiously, that single core performance isn't, well, that big of a difference. It's only about 14% faster compared to last year. And that's a little bit strange because we are talking about a new manufacturing process. So I don't think you would be unjustified in wondering why we don't see a bigger difference in performance. Now, you could wonder that maybe Apple wanted to put those gains into efficiency instead, but as we saw in my full iPhone 14 Pro test, well, the battery life is worse this year in many cases compared to last year. So the big thing that stood out to me here is that the gains are consistent across the board, whether it's CPU, single core, multi-core, or Geekbench compute test for the GPU, the gains are all very similar, around 10 to 15%. And that's actually quite similar to what we saw with the M2 chip. Now, obviously the big difference with the full fat M2 chip is that it has two more GPU cores than last year. But if you compare the eight core M2 MacBook Air to the eight core M1 MacBook Pro from last year, you'll notice that the new GPU is faster, even though the M2 is on the same five nanometer process, unlike the A16 Bionic. But where things get a little bit confusing is if we directly compare the A16 to the M2. To get a better understanding of what this actually means, let's run the 3 d Mark Wildlife Extreme benchmark. This, I think, is a better way to test the GPU than Geekbench Compute. What we find here is that the 8-core M2 GPU scores 5677, the 10-core GPU 6784, and the A16 3365. Now, if you divide those numbers out by the number of GPU cores, you'll find that the M2 eight core has 709 points per core, 678 per core for the 10 core M2, and 673 per core for the A16. So that's actually quite interesting because 
What we find there is that the A16 on a per core basis performs pretty much the same, if maybe a little bit worse than the M2 MacBook Air. But they have different GPU cores. So this would seem to indicate that the A16's GPU performs about the same as the M2 GPU. To give us some more data points here, I ran the Antutu benchmark on both the A16 and A15 chips. And well, honestly, the story is pretty much the same. For the CPU test, it was 214,000 on the A15 compared to 244,000 on the A16. And then for GPU, memory, and UX, the gains were very, very similar. The overall scores of 831,000 versus 829,000 reflect an 11% gain for the A16. I even found the same exact results doing an iMovie export test for some real world 4K performance. It took about 10% less time on the iPhone 14 Pro Max compared to the 13 Pro Max. These results are very consistent. So basically what we're seeing is across the board, no matter what you're looking at, between 10 and 14% gains on both the CPU and GPU. And that's honestly very confusing to me because we're on a new manufacturing process. Is this four nanometer chip only for one year? And then we go to three nanometer. Is the four nanometer process going to come to the M3 generation of Apple Silicon? And then the three nanometer wouldn't make it until M4. It's a little bit strange to see Apple sort of mixing and matching these generations and moving to a new manufacturing process without really taking the time to make the chip perform all that different. Now, the biggest catch to this whole discussion would be the age old debate of, well, do you actually need any additional performance in the iPhone? And the answer to that, of course, is no. Basically, any iPhone from the last three or four or five years is fast enough. That's not an issue at all. However, the Apple Silicon cores that we see in the iPhone are not dramatically different from those that eventually make their way into products like the Mac Studio. So if this is the same core that you will eventually be able to spend $5,000 on in your M2 Ultra Mac Studio, then it does beg the question, is there anything extra that Apple can pump out of this to get more performance? Are they intentionally making this a slower chip for the iPhone because they realize it doesn't need to be faster? Or is this all that we can expect in the next generation of Apple Silicon? I honestly don't know the answer to that, but all of this I think makes it pretty clear why Apple was focusing their comparison on the A16 versus the A13. It looks a lot more dramatic when you compare this to a three-year-old chip. Now, of course, I'm not drawing any conclusions from this. I was mainly just curious about how these new chips are going to perform. It seems like, of course, they are ridiculously powerful for a smartphone. It's easily the fastest chip out there. Everything that Qualcomm has or the Google Tensor chip has, they don't even come close. So I'm not at all worried about the speed of the iPhone. What I am, curious about, let's say, is how this translates to the next generation or even the rest of the current generation of M2 chip. I guess we're gonna have to wait and see. But if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely leave a like down below and comment below letting me know what you think of the new A16 Bionic. Is it good, underwhelming? I'm very curious. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.